morning, everyone. My name is Nikki, and happy Earth Day. Earth Day is one of our favorite days here at the zoo, and we're gonna celebrate by meeting some of our coolest animals. Um, let me introduce you to one. Here. This is Lenny, and that's right, we're learning about owls today. So you're gonna learn from Sarah first out on our savanna, and then I'll bring you back to Lenny. Hey guys, welcome back to Zoo School. My name is Sarah and I'm an educator here at the zoo. Um, and today we are out here in the savanna and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our owls out here on the savanna bridge. Um, here we have our barred owl and his name is Barry. Um, now with our owls out here being um, in the savanna, they have been brought to us um, both from a wildlife sanctuary in Virginia. Um, and they were both deemed non-releasable. Um, and they both have their different stories. Barry here, our barred owl, um, he has a unique story. Um, he's kind of imprinted on humans. Nobody knows how he got that way. Uh, the sanctuary just found him outside of some people's houses, um, kind of wanting food. So he was released, he was captured, um, and then he was actually deemed releasable. Uh, so they released him, but then they found him again, trying to look for more food outside of other people's houses. So then they decided, um, since he's not out hunting on his own, um, that he had to be captured um, and held here in captivity, uh, which is the best life for him. Um, otherwise, uh, it could have been bad news for Barry here. Um, so just a little bit about owls um, that you'll learn later in the video um, is that the reason why they can turn their head three quarters of a full circle is because their eyes are so big, um, which is extremely important for hunting. Uh, males will normally be smaller than females, and that kind of is a general rule for all bird of prey. Um, and that's because the females are the ones sitting on their nest and making their eggs nice and warm. Um, another really cool thing about bird of prey is their talons. Now their talons are what kind of help catch their prey, right? They use their beak kind of as like their fork. Um, that's how they tear apart their food. But their talons are going to be what holds their food and has a very, very firm gr uh, grasp on it. Um, they don't have any muscles in their talons. They only have tendons. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your fist and squeeze super tight and keep on holding it until it hurts just a little bit. Now, it hurts for us because of those muscles, but for Barry here, he doesn't have any muscles. It's just those tendons that kind of close and grasp, and that allows him to fly with that prey and get to a nice high perch so that he can eat. So let's head on over to Grady, our great horned owl. Um, he got his name a uh, great horned owl because of his really cool horns on the top of his head now some of you may think that those are his ears but they actually aren't they're just tufts of feathers um, we don't really know what they're used for um, maybe to help funnel in some of the sound um, so that he can hear better um, these guys have excellent hearing um, their ears are asymmetrical, which means that one is a little bit higher than the other. Um, so that allows them to hear critters kind of crawling under dead leaves and things like that. Um, these guys are silent flyers. So I have a little bit of something here to show you. This is actually from a barn owl. Um, owls have something called fringed feathers. So I don't know if you can see them right here. But right up here, it's really, really light and airy, and that really allows them to be able to fly silent. And that helps them get their prey and kind of sneak up on them and um, attack. Now, under those feathers, we have, hold on, 
I can't find them because they're so light and airy. Well, anyway, they have down feathers. Um, and those are just those white fluffy feathers. Um, and I did put them in my pocket. Oh, there it is. So these are the down feathers. Um, and those are underneath and that helps regulate their temperature because um, these guys are from North America. Uh, so that means that they go through all the seasons just like we do and they need to get more of these down feathers or less of these down feathers. So they will go through a molting um, where they will lose their down feathers. Not all of them, just some of them um, to help cool them off in the summertime. These guys are extremely light, which you will learn later in this video. And that's because their bones are actually hollow. So think of a straw. Um, their bones are kind of like that and that allows them to be extra light in the air so that they can fly um, silently like we said before. All right guys, I hope you had fun learning about the owls out on the savannah with Sarah. So let me formally introduce you to Lenny. So Lenny is our spectacled owl in our education department and they get their name spectacled owl because of those white feathers right above their eyes that you may have noticed. Um, they kind of look like glasses, so that's pretty cool. So owls, like eagles and raptors, are birds of prey. They have these talons and this sharp beak to help with killing their prey. Now there are over 250 owl species in the world, and they live on every continent and, except for Antarctica. Owls are broken up into two groups, owls with heart-shaped faces and owls with round faces. So heart-shaped face owls are like your barn owl, and round-shaped faces are like Lenny here. So owls are mostly nocturnal, so they do most of their hunting at night. Lenny here, um, his species, they actually have been known to hunt in the day as well. Um, they still are mostly nocturnal, but occasionally they will hunt in the day. So Lenny has been with us um, for almost all of his life. He's actually turning one on Sunday, April 26th. We've had him since last July, um, and he has been with us to become an ambassador animal. An ambassador animal has a really important job, their job is to help us educate you um, about these wonderful creatures. So these guys can live to be up to 30 years old, um, and that's in captivity and in the wild as well. They just have a really long lifespan. And these guys can be found in South America, um, in the tropical regions, tropical rainforests along the coasts. Um, so it's pretty cool. They're called neotropical birds. So down in the Amazon where they live, these guys eat a wide variety of things. So their diet includes frogs, crabs, small mammals, lizards, um, opossums, and even skunk. Um, these guys are also known to glean um, insects near trees, so that's pretty cool as well. And that's really important because these guys play a major role in the ecosystem um, by eating all those small rodents. They're actually doing a lot of population control for animals that may carry diseases that may spread to us. So Sarah mentioned that these guys are silent flyers which is pretty cool. I'm actually gonna attach a link to this video that kind of goes more into silent flight, but they cannot be detected by even the most advanced microphone technologies, which is pretty cool and really important because these are top predators. They have to be able to sneak up on their prey and make a successful kill so they can eat for that day. So their eyes are really, really neat. So their eyes are not true eyes. They're not eyeballs like our eyes. They're actually more of like a tube and they're so large in their head that they're immobile. So they have to be able to turn their whole head to, to look around. They can't move their eyes by themselves like we can. So owls cannot turn their head all the way around, like Sarah mentioned. They can turn their head about 270 degrees, which is pretty amazing. They can't turn their head all the way because their head is attached to their spine. And if they turned all the way, they would definitely hurt their neck but they have a special system that helps them to be able to turn their neck. So they actually have a blood pooling system um, in their head and their neck that um, saves blood for that when they do turn their neck and it cuts off circulation, they still have blood flow going to their brain, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's how they are able to turn their head without um, getting dizzy or getting sick or passing out or anything like that. So these guys are pretty amazing. Sarah also mentioned that they have asymmetrical ears. And that's just to hear better. Um, they're able to pinpoint their prey more spot on than we ever could with those asymmetrical ears. So these guys, they get to about 900 grams, which is pretty light. 
They do have to be light to be able to fly. The females will get larger, like Sarah mentioned, than the males. Um, and that's because females do sit on the nest. But for spectacled owls, they actually share nest duties. So males and females will both sit on the eggs. Females will have the majority of the egg sitting time, but they will share the duties and they'll take turns for when they have to hunt. So owls are pretty special. They do make a whole range of vocalizations. Not all owls make the whoo sound. Lenny, as you can hear, he's making a little chirping sound. Some owls like screech owls make screeching sounds. Um, there's a whole variety of sounds that's different for every owl species. Now being a neotropical bird, he does love the warmer weather. So he prefers it to be above 70 degrees. So he's kept in a special habitat here in our education department. And you're probably wondering, where can I see Lenny? Well, you can see him when you book a program with us, when we come to your school, maybe visit your library. So as I mentioned, Lenny lives um, in the Amazon rainforest. Um, and the Amazon rainforest isn't doing so good right now. Um, there's lots of things like habitat loss, um, logging for agriculture. Um, so these guys are in big trouble. And it's our job to protect not only spectacled owls, but all the species that live down in the Amazon. Being the most biodiverse region on Earth, um, we really have to look at what we can do to do our part and help these guys out. So this year, we are celebrating 50 years of Earth Day, which is pretty special. And here at the zoo, we just love the Earth and we wanna make sure we're doing our part to protect the species that we love. So for this Earth Day, we want you guys to get involved at home with conservation and doing your part for the planet. There's so many things you can do, big and small. You can start composting, you can plant a tree, you can reuse, re reusable water bottles instead of plastic. We can all make a difference um, and we challenge you to be that difference. Show us what you're doing for Earth Day and for conservation. Thanks, Lenny. See ya.